I quit social media for an entire year. And I wanna to talk to you about some of the benefits that I've noticed after just giving it up completely. Uh, and I think let's just go into the first thing that I noticed and that was that I was a lot happier. Uh, and I really think that a lot of people, especially in today's world, are so caught up in social media, whether that's they're spending time trying to come up with the perfect posts or the perfect angle of you know, getting the best shot where they look the best, or they could be what I call the silent stalkers of social media. They're the people who they never post, but they're just always on it, right? Uh, and so whichever type of person you are on social media, when you give that up, um, you really do notice some something changes inside. Uh, and that was one of the first things that I've noticed. Uh, and that kind of leads into the second thing that I've really started to be aware of, maybe within the first couple months of just getting rid of social media in general. And that was just how much time I actually had. And I think if you're really caught up in social media, um, I don't really think you understand how much time is gone every day. And when I mean gone, once again, you have to quit social media to really understand what I'm saying because you might think, ah, you know, I'm just scrolling here and there on my lunch break or whatever it might be. But when you give it up, you were like, what do I do? I'm pretty bored, right? And I think that's one of the things that I noticed a couple months in and I'm like, man, I have a lot of extra time. Like, what do I do with all this extra time? And having that extra time allowed me to be a little bit more productive in things that did matter. And not to say that, you know, if you have a business on social media and you have to, you know, do your due diligence to keep it up and running, then, then sure. But even if you do have a business on social media, um, doesn't mean that you might not be wasting your time watching other people's videos or, you know, just spending time browsing. And I think a lot of this mindless scrolling is really where a lot of the problems come into play. Because one of the things that I started to notice, um, I would say maybe a few months in, is there was definitely a, a greater sense of self-fulfillment in a sense. And I really think a lot of people um, spend a lot of time on social media, whether consciously or uh, unconsciously, they're comparing themselves to others. And if you think about social media and exactly what it is, uh, we can use Instagram, for example, you're just being bombarded by people you don't know, right? So you're just on the homepage, you're scrolling, and every time that you scroll, you're just bombarded with uh, new images, new videos, and it's just, it's nonstop. And I know Instagram's not even the big thing anymore. I know a lot of people are on TikTok, which in my opinion is uh, the most toxic thing imaginable that you could even, that you could ever find yourself on. Uh, but whatever it is that you're spending your time on, you just have to think about what it is that you're actually consuming. Not only do you have to think about what's happening, but just take a step back. And I think when you quit social media, it allows you to take that step back and to kind of look at what it is that you've been doing. And I know for me personally, it allowed me to think, you know, like what exactly is going on, right? Because if you think about us as humans, um, we haven't really changed much over the last, you know, tens of thousands of years. The human genome has not evolved um, that much. And so when we think about the fact that, you know, the type of humans from our genetics uh, in our human genome 10,000 years ago, the fact that it hasn't changed much versus the trend and the explosion in technology and all these new things that we are exposed to on a daily basis, we have to think, well, what's it doing to our brains? And I think when you sit back, or I should say, when you take a step back and you start to look at it, really think about it, what's happening? You're constantly being bombarded, new image, new video, right? Every second, every swipe of your finger, it's just new, new, new. And one of the things that that's doing to a lot of people is it's causing social anxiety. Uh, it's causing people to um, not feel self-fulfillment in life. They feel very, um, you know, they don't feel like they're doing the right thing with their life. They don't feel like they're, um, you know, that they're, they have it, right? That they've made it because someone is always going to have it better than them on social media, right? Someone looks better than you. Um, someone has more muscle than you. 
someone's in better shape than you, right? Then, you know, you look at your life and then you go to their page and what you see is whatever it is that they want to show you, right? It may not actually be a reflection of that person's life, but on social media, that's the illusion. And sometimes we can forget the fact that it is an illusion at the end of the day and that that's not necessarily what that person's life looks like, right? It's just what they're showing you. They're showing you the highlight reel, right? They're showing you the best parts of their life. Maybe they took a thousand photos and just one of them with the lighting was definitely on point. So they looked, you know, 20 pounds more muscular and 10% less body fat. But that's not what they look like. Uh, but when you're constantly seeing that, when you're constantly being bombarded with the best of the best of what everyone has to show, it really starts to steal away your happiness and your joy. And one of the things that I've heard a long time ago, and I really do think that it, it applies um, very strongly to social media, is this quote that comparison is the thief of joy. And I was thinking about that recently when you know, I was just, you know, getting back to social media after this year. And I was like, you know, I'm not really missing much, right? Like, I don't care about these people. Like, I don't even know who you are. I don't know who this person is. But it's it's such a trap because after a year of getting rid of it, I kind of came back to it recently. And, you know, I was just spending my time, you know, just like like everyone else, you know, just going and scrolling. And, and you're, you get about five minutes in and you're like, where did the time go? Like, who am I even looking at, right? Like, I don't even know who these people are. And it makes you think, like, what, what exactly is it that you're doing? Um, what are you bombarding your brain with? What, and how is that changing your brain? So I think after getting rid of it completely, oh, another thing that I've noticed is, uh, and I don't want to say social anxiety, because I'm definitely not the type of person who has social anxiety, but if there was even a little bit of social anxiety, you know, talking to new people, uh, keeping eye contact with people, things like that, you know, those little tiny things, um, even if a little bit of it did exist, I've noticed that a lot of that is gone now. And I don't necessarily know what it is about why that is the case, but it's definitely something that I've noticed. And so I think if you're a person who's like, you know, you really have a hard time talking to people. You have a lot of social anxiety. Um, you know, do you spend a lot of time on social media? And I think one of the reasons why that might be the case um, is just you're comparing yourself to other people, right? So like, let's say you spend an hour to two hours on average per day on social media. Well, you have to think about what's happening subconsciously because a lot of this stuff is not necessarily... Uh, you're not necessarily conscious about what's going on, right? You might be seeing images such as people who look better than you, right? And subconsciously, seeing images of people who are better looking than you, are in better shape than you, or you're looking at a family that's just, you know, they have, they have perfect kids, right? Wife is a 12 out of 10, you know, husband is a 12 out of 10, right? They just, every day they're on vacation, Every time that you see that, you're subconsciously comparing yourself to that person or that family or whoever it is that you spend a lot of time following. And in the back of your mind, what's happening is you're having feelings of, um, you know, uh, not having self-worth, you know, being worthless, uh, you know, feeling negative um, emotions such as, you know, you're, you're trying to compare your life to theirs and it's not matching up. So that's causing feelings of inadequacy. And all these things are happening in the background, whether you know it or not. And so subconsciously, there's a lot of stuff that's happening. And you have to be asking the question, well, how is that changing and molding my brain? You see, one of the things that we know, um, what science has shown us in recent years is that the brain is malleable, right? It's plastic in a way. It's called brain plasticity. And all that means is that based on the imagery or the suggestions, whether auditory or visual, that whatever you're constantly being bombarded with, it has great influence over molding and shaping your brain. And if you think about that, then we can come back and think, well, why does social anxiety 
exist, right? What actually is causing it? And by quitting social media, having that social anxiety kind of go away, I think you have to ask the question, well, what has social media been doing to my brain? How has it been affecting my mind, whether I know it or not? And for me, I was not someone who was constantly on social media. Uh, I don't think I'm someone, I, I definitely know that there's people who spend more time than I did for sure. So the fact that with how little I spent on social media, and I say little and it's still probably like an hour plus per day, uh, but it's really scary to know that some people are way beyond that, two, three hours plus per day, if not even more. Uh, and that's, who knows, on the weekends when they have nothing to do, right? And so for the health benefits that I've noticed, feeling happier, having reduced anxiety, and especially in social situations, uh, feeling an overwhelming sense of joy with just the little things that I'm doing in life, um, also just having more time, being more productive, you know, getting that time back really allows you to think about what is a priority in your life, you know, where are you going to uh, allocate this time, right? What I was able to do with the time that, that I got from getting rid of social media was to take on a new sport, right? So recently I was able to pick up rock climbing and try that out, um, and it's just something that you can think about, you know, with the time that you regain, what is it that you can do? Can you spend that time to, you know, I know this is a health channel, so, you know, can you use that time to uh, train, right? Can you use that time to prep your food or to, uh, you know, do something, right? Learn a new language, whatever it is. Uh, I really think that there's, that there should be a lot more awareness put to this topic because, the health benefits, right? Like this has always been a health channel and I definitely am going to be making more videos uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you think about the benefits of quitting, I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot to it, right? And like I said earlier, you just have to think about what is that, what exactly is it doing to your mind? How much time do you spend? And I actually think that that's a great question for you guys is, how much time on average do you spend on social media? And that could be anything from watching content on YouTube to, you know, just mindless scrolling on Instagram or TikTok. How much time do you spend on social media? Just go ahead and put it in the comments. I'm really curious to know. And you know, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and that was that when it comes to fitness in particular, there's just a lot of garbage out there, you know? And I think the more time you spend on social media, the more confusing a lot of this becomes, right? Because I have my clients and I have people that I train that are in their 40s and 50s, and you would not believe how addicted to social media some of these people are. Like you would think that it's just kids. It's not. People in their 40s and 50s are equally as addicted to social media the same way that kids are right? I have this one lady that I train who's in her mid forties and she spends so much time looking at all of these other women who are in so much better shape than her. And she's confused, right? She's confused why she doesn't look like that. And it's, you know, we have these conversations sometimes during our training sessions. And what I was thinking about is a lot of people's progress is actually being held back right? Because they spend so much time looking at other people. And it's like, well, why don't I look like that? I train really hard. I'm on point all the time with my nutrition. And so th this is another issue because fitness and nutrition, getting in shape, losing fat, building muscle, these are already very complicated issues, right? And I think that social media can add another layer of complexity to it. And if you think about bodybuilders back in the golden era in the 1970s, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have all this information. All they knew were the basics and they would spend their time practicing the basics and they got phenomenal results. And some of the best physiques that have ever existed, at least in my opinion, will always be in the 70s. You know, you look at the physiques like Mike Menser, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Columbo. There were just so many great physiques back then and none of these guys had access to social media. And I think today's world, there's just, 
it's just too much. It really is. Because it's not just images, it's also videos, right? And you get people who say, hey, I look like this because I'm doing this, right? I'm carb cycling, I'm vegan, I'm, I'm following this diet. And you're like, hey, well, that person looks great, right? So let me go and follow them. Um, and this is just the problem, right? And the more time that you spend on social media, you can literally watch one person's video, be inspired because you're like, hey, that guy looks great, so I'm gonna follow his advice, and you just do one, one little swipe and all of a sudden you get conflicting information with the next post. And that's literally how it is right now. And so if you want to you know, clear out and clear away all the bullshit that's out there, I highly suggest trying to take a break from social media, okay? Now, by taking a break, you're also not gonna be seeing my videos either, right? And that's okay, right? As long as it means, hey, you know, take a break, start cutting back a little bit. And I wanted to make another video for you guys, and if you would like to see a video like this, where we kinda go into how do you filter through a lot of the crap that's out there, right? You spend any time on YouTube or Instagram, I'm sure you've come across quite a bit of people, uh, you know, selling their programs, and telling you what the best diet is or what the best approach is. And everyone has their own opinion on it. So how do you find the right answer? How do you find what's gonna work best for you? So if that kind of topic interests you, let me know um, because I plan on making a future video discussing that um, and going into a lot of detail in terms of how you cut through all the crap that's in this industry and how you're gonna figure out exactly what to do for your body type and for your goal, okay? But I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope it gives you something to think about. If you're asking the question, will I get back to making videos? That's what the plan is right now. So if you do wanna see those videos, make sure that you are subscribed um, and then just reach out to me in the comments if you have any questions, okay? So make sure you guys look out for that new video um, that'll be coming out soon, okay? I'll see you guys soon.